Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought it would be fun to share with you the 10 most recent perfumes in my collection and actually rank them. I know you guys always like to see what's new. I love talking about perfumes on here and I feel like the ranking kind of really puts in perspective what fragrances I'm really loving and ones I'm not so much loving. And there's a couple in here that are like complete dislikes that either were gifted or I blind bought. So we definitely have some in the bottom that I don't even like at all so I thought this would be fun most of these are fairly new there's a couple older scents in here too but new to me let's go ahead and get started so on the bottom number 10 I have to go with replicas new fragrance on a date this is described as grapes and roses and it's supposed to kind of give you a memory of being on a date at like a vineyard or something this is really one of the worst perfumes I have ever smelled personally now Perfume is very subjective. Everyone has different thoughts and opinions. I'm more of a sweet gourmand girl, so you're going to see more of those scents that rank higher, but this is definitely not my speed. I will say, though, I did get this one sent to me, and you guys know I always give an honest review no matter what. I see so many people that get stuff sent, and I feel like they're always trying to be positive about everything that is sent to them, but that's not how things work here. We're here to give honest reviews. Just because you got an NPR doesn't mean that you have to like it, and hopefully brands do understand that. Or maybe I'll get kicked off the list. I don't know. But yeah, I really do not like the scent. And I feel like a lot of people don't either. So this fragrance has notes of blackcurrant syrup, pink pepper, bergamot, rose and geranium, patchouli, moss, vetiver, and musk. So definitely some very strong notes in this one. I heard someone say it reminds them of stale wine. And I kind of have to agree with that. You do get a wine vibe. It's really potent though. There's something so harsh in this scent that it just is an instant headache for me extremely floral as well it's very powerful roses and just like a weird off wine scent on this one but yeah this is the bottom definitely going to be decluttering this one out of my collection number nine is another scent that i didn't really care for i wouldn't say it's awful it's okay it's just not my speed this is the billy eilish number two perfume so her original perfume is definitely more kind of spicy and sweet vanilla and this is like the opposite which makes sense because the original is gold this one's black they just kind of seem like opposite scents so trying to cater to everyone which i totally understand this one has notes of apple blossom, bergamot, black pepper, papyrus, poppy, palo santo, ebony, and vanilla. I get a ton of woodiness out of this scent, and I don't really like woody scents. Like, surprisingly, I know so many people love, like, let's say, La Labo. I know that has a lot of sandalwood in it. I can't stand that one, which is crazy. So, if you like along the lines of La Labo, Santel 33, I feel like you would like this, but... For me, it just, it smells so woody, almost very masculine, unisex, so not necessarily in a bad way, but I just don't like those type of scents on me, and I do prefer the original Eilish perfume. Coming in at number eight, this is not a brand new scent, but it's new to me. This was sent over from Ellis Brooklyn, their Salt Fragrance. Now, I usually really like their stuff. I love their Sweet Perfume and their Bee Perfume, so I figured I would try this one for like spring, summer. This one has notes of Ylang Ylang, Violet Leaves, Tiari Flower, Magnolia, Ambergris, Musk, and Sandalwood. So this was actually not really what I was expecting, again, with the Sandalwood would know I'm just not a fan really thought this one to be just more ocean like and breezy and aquatic and in a way it it kind of has the aquatic vibe but again it's very woody smelling so it's not really up my alley and then as it dries down it gets really floral so it's not really like a tropical scent if you're looking for more of that you would probably try their sun fruit one but this is definitely more again kind of unisex but it is very fresh not really aquatic though in my opinion but it's not my favorite so those are on the kind of bottom three of my collection now the rest of these scents I actually do enjoy because I did pick them out myself and I really love them so coming in at number seven this was really hard to kind of rank these but I'm going to give it to the Dolce & Gabbana Lily this was a TJ Maxx find I got a really good deal on it and I'm really surprised with how pretty and how much I like this scent like I'm usually not into florals like this but I think this one is such a pretty scent for spring this one has notes of passion fruit lemon and bergamot middle notes of rose and pink lily and base notes of musk sandalwood and vanilla this just is so fresh and pretty 
it's not too floral. I think this leans more on the fresh side and a little bit sweet. I do get the citrus notes in here and just maybe a hint of flowers, but really it's not that floral. I know there's a lot of other scents in this line, but highly recommend the Lily one. Um, I think they still sell this full price on Ulta and I got it like half off. So definitely check TJ Maxx and see if you guys can find it as well. But I really enjoy this one, especially for spring. Next, we have another brand new launch. This is the Carolina Herrera Good Girl Blush. This was a blind buy for me. I had to go ahead and pick it up. I'm usually a pretty big fan of her scents, and I love the pink bottle that this comes in. This one also has notes of bergamot, mandarin orange, middle notes of peony, rose water, and ylang ylang, base notes of vanilla and tonka beans. So this one is actually so different than the rest of the Good Girl line, so definitely unexpected. It's actually really floral. It's very floral, but it's also very almost candied sweet. So I think it's honestly so pretty. I know some people think it smells like, like a fresh laundry detergent as well, which I'm not mad at. I honestly think it's stunning. I've been wearing this one a lot and it's really strong. So since this is just so different from the line, I just think this is a really good one and I've been really enjoying this one. It's a great spring fragrance. Coming in at number five, I'm gonna give it to the Kaoli Pistachio Gelato scent. I know this has so much like mixed reviews. I do enjoy the scent. It's not what I expected and I don't think it has the most longevity so that's why it's ranked at number five. Otherwise, I feel like I would have put it up higher even though they are advertising it with the notes on the back which are all really sweet notes they actually have a lot more like I'm about to list about 30 notes here but let's just go over the main ones pistachio bergamot rum ice cream there's a ton of floral notes in the middle lily of the valley jasmine pear peony base notes whipped cream marshmallow cotton candy sandalwood tonka bean cedar cacao like why there like there is a lot going on here but you would think with all those notes that this would have more longevity to it but it's pretty subtle in my opinion but i really like the scent so i've seen quite a few other reviews and it's always fun to hear other people's different perspectives on things Immediately, I really did get like this almost bright citrus opening, like it was really almost cotton candy-like. So I really smelled the cotton candy, really smelled the whipped cream, and then as it dries down, it gets a little bit more milky and more pistachio-like, but I think a, little, a lot of people are caught off guard by the opening. It's just not what we kind of expected, but I totally get the vibes of what people are saying. Like, it does smell cooling. Like it smells like you're in an ice cream shop. So I don't know if Kaylee's going for more of the experience, which I can totally get that too. But I was hoping it would be more of an authentic pistachio fragrance, but it's still so pretty and I still think it's really delicious. Okay, number four, I had to give it to the Valentino Donna Born in Roma intense version. I will tell you, when I first sprayed this, I was honestly unsure if I was going to like it or not because it's pretty strong and it's very floral, but this one has really grown on me and has made it to the top of the list. This one has notes of bourbon, vanilla, amber, jasmine, and benzoin, so really not a whole lot going on in here. This one you really have to let dry down because at first, the opening is extremely floral, so much so that I really didn't like it at first and I thought it was going to be too much, but... Then it starts drying down and it becomes just more sweet, jammy, and really strong. And it actually does smell like the original, but like a stronger version. So what I've been loving to do with this is actually mixing it with the original. And your scent will last literally all day. I think it is so good. And that's why I put it in the top, just because how strong this one is. And I do really like it. And I was really surprised by it and taken aback. But I think it's definitely one to try. Especially if you love the original. I think you will like this one as well. Just know that it is more powerful. It is a more floral version to me. The other one's definitely more light and sweet. And this is just deeper. Okay, number three, I had to give it to YSL Black Opium. This is their new Parfum version, and this is literally the best one they have done. I know they've done a lot. Like, they probably have six or seven versions of Black Opium, but if you're a vanilla lover, you are going to want this one in your collection. It is so good. This one has tons of extra vanilla in it. This has pear, cinnamon, green mandarin, solar notes, orange blossom, and jasmine, and then base notes of Madagascar vanilla, bourbon vanilla, Vanilla Absolute, Coffee, Vanilla Orchid, and Patchouli, and I really smell the base notes in this one very prominently. Like, oh my gosh. It's like a cloud of delicious coffee and vanilla. I'm obsessed. I wish I had the big one of this. If you haven't always loved Black Opium, give this one a shot because I feel like it's just 
the best version of it and what I always wanted black opium to be. Okay, number two is actually gonna go to the Dua brand. I've been trying this brand out recently and I've really been loving their scents so far. So I picked up their Vanillic Dreams. This was said to be a dupe for Indult Tihoda and that's like a really expensive vanilla. It's like 200 bucks or something, really hard to get. This is very close, like very spot on. It's a true vanilla extract type of scent. And again, I love vanilla and this is literally vanilla in its purest form. This one did have like a weird almost artificial opening though but as it dried down it got super close to the Tehoda and they're like worlds of difference like I think this one's $60 so it's way cheaper and I actually felt like this one is stronger in scent. It smells so delicious. This one just has notes of it says vanilla and musk and it's literally just pure delicious vanilla. And then lastly, oh my gosh, this scent, I am obsessed, you guys. I have been wanting this for so long. I finally got it. This is by, oh, I'm going to butcher this, but Mason Mataha, Mataha, Mateha. Don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but this is the Escapade Gourmand Perfume. All my Gourmand Perfume girlies have been hyping this one up, and I finally got to try it out. This was sent over from Lucky Scent. I think that's mostly the only place you can get it. It comes in and out of stock, so you'll definitely want to check this out, but holy crap, this is so good. This one has notes on the website of black sugar, vanilla, tonka bean, and musk. And if you like those really sweet scents, you must try this one. So everyone pretty much says this smells exactly like a creme brulee, which I do agree with. Because you have this like delicious vanilla custardy scent, but then it has this toasted note in it. It almost reminds me of roasted marshmallows. It is so deep, so delicious and intoxicating and so long wearing. I'm seriously, I'm just in love. I'm in love. I wish I picked this up sooner, but now I have it to enjoy. Oh my gosh. If you want to smell like dessert food, please pick this one up. It's worth the price tag. It's super long wearing and you get a huge bottle of this. This is a 3.4 ounce. Since this is so pricey, I'm like, can you guys please give me a discount code? So they did give me a 10% off code, which I'll have here and in the description box. So if you guys want to order it for yourself, you can. Um, I got it from Lucky Scent. They are an authorized retailer. They sell a lot of niche perfumes like this. And they also sell little samples that you can buy if you don't want to commit to the full size. So obsessed with that one. Definitely deserves my number one spot. And that is going to be it for this video going over my 10 most recent perfumes. Let me know if you guys have tried these. I know there is a Sephora sale coming up as well if you guys want to score an extra 10 to 20% off in April. I know most of these scents you can find at Sephora besides a couple of these, but I really wanted to kind of give you guys my thoughts on these. Lately, I've been posting a lot of short videos on here with like different perfumes I get in the mail. That's just easiest than making like a dedicated video, but then I like to come back and do these kind of roundups as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.